Well, welcome back to the shop. I'm sure glad you guys came by because we've got a little update today and it's going to be brief. All right, so what have I been up to? Well, um, I've been taking the skills that we've already touched on in this build to work on the landing gear for the Fokker D8. So let's get right into that. All right, so as you can see, the uh, the landing gear is mostly put together here. Um, I've got some progress photos that I took along the way, but I constructed the, uh, the wing that goes on the landing gear. I constructed it the exact same way as the main wing that we've already touched on. From there, I used the plans to, uh, well, pieces of the plans, they're down there, uh, to, <laughs> to bend these wires. Um, so what you do is you put the wire in the vise and you heat it up a little bit and you bend it. And I use a hammer to make sure that the radius is as small as possible to hammer a little bit right here. So that's how I get these nice tight bends. Uh, and then there was a template there um, to make these pieces of foam that I, I made two pieces of foam and then squeezed them with these guys uh, to make an indentation in the foam. And then I used more of those clamps and some tape to hold them together with Gorilla Glue so that we have a nice dressed up fairing that's not going anywhere. And then you sand it to shape. So once that was assembled, I could um, cut, I had to cut out a portion of this because I didn't realize that there was a sequence I was supposed to follow, but it didn't matter because, you know, it's it's foam and, and, you know, it glues back together and it's nice and smooth and I don't even need spackle to, to blend it in. But that was installed and then I had to add some small pieces of foam around here. You can see how there's a little bit of, of carving work yet to do. Um, but the, the nice thing is that I have a, a little bit of a, a spring action on my landing gear, uh, as, as a result of the design. So all of that took a couple of days, not really a huge deal. Uh, so if I bend them, I can also rebuild them with heavier gauge steel wire. Um, so I'm using one eighth, uh, one eighth inch steel wire for the main legs and 530 seconds for the main axle. Uh, so if I have to go larger, I can do 530 seconds all around, but we'll see how it handles the weight. First of all, I can, like I said, it only took a couple of days, so it's not a huge deal if I have to redo the whole landing gear, but I do have wheels too. So wheels, uh, wheels almost as, almost as big as my face. Um, so these are uh, Dubro 7-inch vintage wheels, and they are just awesome. Look at all the fun little details that are all over this thing. And they mold these things in-house, made in the USA. Really, really top-notch gear stuff. And huge shout-out to them for sending them my way. Um, really, really thank you guys so much. Really, it's very generous of you. So with the landing gear and the wheels out of the way, uh, you'd be surprised to know that these are pretty heavy. Um, these are designed to hold, you know, 30 pound World War I airplanes, <laughs> you know, big gassers. So these are stout, these are heavy, uh, but we're still gonna use them for our really lightweight project. Um, so rest assured that the weight of these is really heavy compared to the rest of the model but I'm not complaining about that because the weight will be forward of the CG and it will be down low. So it's actually going to work in our favor. Moving on. All right. So the next thing that I want to go over that I've built is the rudder. I have built out the rudder and the rudder looks like a rudder. Now there is a small vertical stabilizer that is like a, tr a small triangle that goes like here. Um, but I wanted to show this, now, because this is really simple construction, so it's just uh, hard basswood, and I had to 
use some uh, some balsa filler to get it the width that I needed, but the main structure is really thick piece of basswood. You want basswood here because number one, if <laughs> when the airplane noses over on a landing, uh, the first thing that it's going to strike is the rudder. All right. Um, so it's just important to have that top impact. Yes, we're using lightweight foam, but it's still going to have some force behind it. Um, so there's that. But also it, by having a rigid structure for the foam to glue to, uh, you're not going to have as many dynamic forces that are going to warp or distort the flying surface. So this really is a flying control surface. Um, you know, there's almost no vertical stabilization. It's, it's all flying rudder. Um, and I did uh, create some uh, pockets for hinges before I glued everything together. Uh, it's a simple matter of uh, figuring out where you want them and then you can use a drill to drill out uh, the edges and then use the Dubro tool, the Dubro hinge tool to, uh, to dig things out. And now I simply just used I didn't use the, any of the forks. I just used this to drag the wood along, pull it up, drag, pull along, because at each end, remember, I said I drilled it out. So you're dragging from one hole to the next and making it hollow in between. Pretty easy stuff. I didn't feel like I needed to go over that in a whole lot of detail or dedicate a whole episode to it. It's really straightforward. The last part that I did to this rudder is I did glass this. I did apply some fiberglass. You can see some of the scrap cloths just sitting around. Now, I'm not applying the fiberglass with epoxy or polyester resins. I'm using something called sanding sealer. Uh, sanding sealer is essentially just water-based polyurethane. It's just a more concentrated form. If you look at the MSDS, or material safety data sheets. Uh, they really are essentially the exact same thing. Um, so I just lay it down with a paintbrush in a plastic cup. Um, where's my paintbrush and plastic? There they are. Paintbrush and plastic cup. See, I even clean them out. I clean them out because they're water-based polyurethane. Yeah, it's really easy cleanup. So if you drip some, it's easy to clean up and What's great about it too, is you can accelerate the drying. I accelerate it with a hair dryer. So I've only applied two coats, two coats here. And the reason is, if you can tell, yeah. So the texture, we're going after some of the texture because originally, again, this was covered in fabric. So we get to keep that fabric texture. Pretty, pretty sweet. So that is done as well. One more thing for this quick update. So over the past little while, I've gotten some mail and <laughs> some, some really important pieces of this giant airplane puzzle. Um, let me get the ruler first out while, while I'm talking here. So you get a, a, a scope of how big some of this stuff is. So I, I, I got motor stuff. Um, so I got an ESC, uh, I'm using a uh, 80 amp, Beetle ZTW Beetles series ESC from Buddy RC. Uh, I've had really good luck with these uh, so far. The so I've I've got two other of these that I that I've put in other airplanes recently, and I'm I'm just impressed with the quality of these for the price. Um, not too expensive. Really good voltage regulation. Quiet operation of the motors, like noticeably like. Yeah, it's, it's pretty surprised. Um, I've also gone ahead and uh, applied a, a RPM sensor. Since I'm running an FR Sky system, I'm going to just use, I've got this spare RPM sensor and it has a thermocouple here too, so I can monitor the temperature of the ESC. So that was important. Um, I love, I've grown to love my telemetry data. So um, that was a pretty easy thing to just add on because I had it in the drawer anyway. Moving on to the motor. This is a uh, motor from Motion RC. This is a free wing. This is actually the same motor that comes off of their 
giant foamy Corsair of all things. Uh, it's a three, it's a five zero five five size, three forty kV motor, and normally it turns a okay eighteen by twelve by three blade prop. And I have this same motor on my Curtis P six E Hawk, and the the prop combination, and it is marvelous. It pulls around that fourteen pound airplane, no problems. So. By the nature of our rule of sizing, of the you know back of the napkin kind of math, if you're going to go up in diameter, you go down in pitch. Um, so 1812. So we're going to go 1911, 2010, 219, 8. Yes, you heard me right. 22 inch prop. And um, I got a doozy. I got the cream of the crop Zor World War I scale looking prop. This thing is gorgeous. Super solid. Comes pre-balanced from the factory. It is absolutely stunning and will be perfect. Now, a scale size prop will be 24 inches, roughly. Um, so going to 22 is perfectly fine with me. Uh, I am going to be running this on a six cell setup. So six cells running this um, should be fine. Um, be plenty of power. Should be somewhere in the neighborhood of of a thousand watts if I go with four cell. Uh, some quite a bit more uh, if I go with six cell. So I, I have some testing to do, but six cell should be fine because I run six cell on the Hawk. Um, but 6L will give me lots more weight up front too. And I shouldn't be over amping. Um, should give me roughly five minutes of flying time, which is perfect for me. So the whole combination is just perfect. So there you have it, guys. That's just the brief update today. Um, you know, th there's not a whole lot of stuff to show you guys, but I wanted to provide you an update. Some things to take note of as you build your own giant scale foamy airplanes. Uh, you don't have to have some crazy 12S setup for a giant scale airplane. You just don't. You, <laughs> I'm going to be using two giant three cell packs. Uh, 6,000 three cell is, is what I'm targeting. Uh, and I'll wire those in series and it's going to be great. So until next time, guys, keep on working on your giant scale foamy flying works of art.